Hi everyone, my name is Anne. Welcome to Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and I thought for this review we could have some fun comparing watercolor workbooks. I have two of them that I want to compare today, and I feel like they're both good, but for entirely different reasons. So let's see if we can discover which one might be right for you or someone on your list. Are you ready? Let's go check them out. How many of you still have the luxury of being near to a bookshop that is well stocked so that if you were to go in and check out a book that you heard about, you will find it in stock and you will also be able to open it, look through it, feel it. They won't have to put it on special order. That's not my reality. So I get things online. But <laughs> um, this one is the first one we're going to look at is by Kirsty Rice. She is a graphic designer, artist, illustrator, and uh, uh, YouTube uh, instructor and I really like her book here this one is called the winter cutting garden it is a water coloring book and I want to keep that in mind because her book really needs to be considered in my opinion as a coloring book which is a great asset if that's what you're looking for so for instance on the inside first of all I love the format I love how this uh, the cover folds out it's kind of a trifold situation there are some words in the foreword from uh, fellow artists and then in this middle picture here where it says experiment she really goes over different things that you can do to, to really just consider this coloring book as something you don't have to follow any set rules to play with and I really like that uh, on this one includes 25 different designs and the paper she the only description that I've been able to find of the paper she describes it as thick and I think that's really good but I would like to know more it's got a little bit of a tooth to it it feels like a really good uh, sketch paper actually and it'll probably tolerate some water 25 pictures in here they do tear out really easily which I love so uh, and the size is eight and a half inches by 11 inches which is great because if you wanted to uh, work on one of these pictures and then frame it you wouldn't need to break the bank trying to figure out how to frame it you can just go pick up an 8 by 10 frame and put it in there and you're good to go just trim it a little bit so in this amaryllis for instance um, what I wanted to show you is kind of how how the paper acts um, with using watercolor because this is marketed as a watercoloring book. I think that if you wanted something just to play with, just to have fun, and in, you know, in Christy likes to say to simply remember joy, just, just have fun, I think that this is really a, a good book to get. The style of these drawings is very graphic. Um, the paper is a beautiful bright white. Um, you are going to have these black lines showing through. So if that is something that you don't like, maybe use gouache on this. Colored pencil, your black lines will still show through. You could take the time to paint over them, uh, but then you might want to put them back in. So I don't know. That, that's, that's all up to your, your coloring pen, colored pencil options. But I do want to show you what water acts like on this paper. And we're going to speed this up in just a minute so you can really see how the water kind of just sits on top of the page which is not a negative it's a characteristic of this paper so I just want you to know what you're getting into if you decide to to go this route you wouldn't be getting something like uh, a sized watercolor paper I really don't think I'm 99% sure <laughs> this is uh, a heavy sketch paper that it, or maybe it's mixed media I don't know because it can handle a little bit of water but like I said, the only way that I can find a description about it is that it's thick. And that is true. And it has a nice enough tooth that if you're using pastel pencils or something like that, you could, do, you could definitely use that. The black and white contrast is wonderful because if you tear the page out and put it on a light box, you can trace it onto whatever paper you want and then go from there. Um, so there's lots of options with this book. I chose to paint right in it. This flower that I'm working on right now, I decided to do wet into dry because I did the bulb and that first blossom 
wet into wet and my camera stopped filming so I'll get back to that in just a second but here we go here's the finished and I was able to get shading in I was able to layer um, I had fun so if that is what you're looking for an uh, easy way to just spend some time de-stress a little bit have fun then this might be the book that you would like to have. There's really no watercolor instruction per se in this book. She does offer some tips. And in this Christmas cactus one here, I've slowed it down a little bit since I lost the footage on the other Amaryllis. I don't know what happened in my technological world today, but that uh, footage went into space somewhere. Um, I wanted to give you the tips that I have found when you're working on, uh, on this type of paper in this book. I'm using a very small brush. The best thing I can tell you about a guide for brushes if you're not really familiar is the less this might sound really obvious but it, it's kind of one of those moments where the light bulb could go off the, <laughs> the fewer filaments you have if it's a very tiny brush it's going to hold a lot less water so in a book like this that is something that you will find beneficial now on the amaryllis I did use a number eight long round and I did not have a lot of buckling everything dried very well I didn't have to struggle with backgrounds or cauliflower blooms. I mean, it worked. It worked fine. Um, it performed exactly as I suspected that it would. And I have a lot of experience painting on this kind of paper because I've done a lot of mixed media work and I've done watercolor very often on paper that is not sized. So I kind of know how to adjust my painting style for paper like this. So if you are a newbie to watercolor, this may not be the best place for you to start that I've reserved for the second book. If you just want something to color and have fun and just really de-stress, enjoy your day, then Christie's books are really quite good for that. The, the illustrations are beautiful. Um, as you can see here, we can get all kinds of layering in. I can put in a lot of glazes. If I were to uh, go wet over dry, you can do two, three, four glazes. It really is easy to paint in this book. The, um, the only caveat that I would give you with that, again, is use a small brush because you'll be able to hold less water that way. And uh, in, in, your, in your filaments, you'll have less water just naturally. And you'll also be able to get into these small areas. Now that we're all zoomed in, you can see how inaccurate my eyesight is. But that's what happens when you've been around the, the planet a few years. <laughs> so... When you're when you've had as many birthdays as I have, the eyes don't focus as well as they once did. So um, forgive me if I go out of the lines. But then again, I was having fun. So uh, maybe my goal was not to stay in the lines. <laughs> I'll leave that mystery up to you. Um, one of the things that uh, that she does include on uh, each one of these in the in the preface area there, she does include a little thumbnail of each drawing and then uh, a little bit of uh, a story about it, a painting tip, and then a little quote on being an artist. So it, the quote might be from someone in her family, it might be from someone, um, someone famous, someone noteworthy, um, not that her family's not noteworthy, but you know what I mean, someone that you could actually Google and figure out what they say. And then she also has her own advice and thoughts. And uh, here's one of them that I really enjoy. This one is a quote from her Winterberry Variety page. And it says, and I'll read you directly from the book here. It says, artists avoid distractions. You can't do good work when your attention is pulled in many directions. When you're sitting down to paint for just a small chunk of time, you deserve to enjoy that time uninterrupted. So put the phone away unless you're listening to music. So little tips like that really just help you get that element of focus, element of uh, centering yourself so that you can be creative and really focus on that part of your brain and um, let your creative muscles grow. So you can see here I'm doing some wet on wet techniques where I'm dropping in pigment over other pigment that's already there. So technically I guess it's wet into damp, but on this paper it's more wet into wet. This one, I let it dry out a little bit before I added the darker level of green. And then I'm going to come back in here with a brush that's just damp and just blend the two together. And I really like the soft gradient. And again, I've had a lot of experience with this kind of paper. This is not traditional watercolor paper. So if you have never painted watercolor before, you may, you definitely, you can get this book. You can do whatever you want. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not your mom. I'm not going to tell you, <laughs> tell you what to do. 
I am letting you know that if you do choose to get this book as your very first watercolor workbook and you're not familiar with painting on different kinds of paper, you might end up a little bit frustrated. You might want to save this for something like colored pencil because honestly, this paper is beautiful paper. It's quite luxurious. Um, 25 individual drawings. And here you can see I've dried it thoroughly and now I'm making it a mixed media piece and uh, going over some of these areas with colored pencil. The thing that I really like about Christie's drawings is not only are the lines thick and bold, um, relatively thick and bold rather, <laughs> You definitely are given some uh, suggestions for how to shade and where to shade. If you look closely at this, uh, this Christmas cactus drawing here, for example, now that I've got it zoomed in, you can see some hash marks and they will guide you on where to shade your watercolor, where to um, add more pigment, darker pigment. That is true on just about every single one of her drawings. So it's kind of a really nice, I don't have to think, I don't have to, put forth any effort, I can just be. I can just immerse myself in the moment, be creative, and enjoy the process. And for so many of us, that's why we paint. So I think, um, you know, for uh, even if you're a professional level artist, something like this can really be a lot of fun, especially what I have found a million, million times to be true. <laughs> is if you have someone in your family that you find, I'm just gonna use this as an example, um, a little bit difficult to talk to. For instance, a teenager. Let's just assume that you've got a teenager that would much rather spend time playing video games, I'm gonna use a very stereotypical story here, than spending time having a conversation with you talking about what happened in school. But you're their parent, you really wanna know what's going on in school. Well, if you can get them to agree, maybe buy them some, uh, some of their favorite food to go along with this, Hand them a paintbrush, sit down, say, hey, while you're having your favorite snack there, why don't you, you help me out? You do this half the page and I'll do the other half. And when you are working on something else like that, it's just easier to have those important conversations. Things like this are also really good for people who are um, elderly and struggling with perhaps uh, memory loss anything creative outlet like this, any kind of creative outlet can really help keep that part of our brains engaged. And that is so important to making us well-rounded human beings. So these are some things that, uh, that I think you can really get from Christie's books. And she has so many of them. This is just the winter cutting garden that I have. She's got one for each season. She's got journals, she's got note cards. She has a ton of things. Here's the book that I recommend if you are a new watercolorist looking for a workbook. Dana Fox has created this beautiful book that is about nine inches square, uh, as opposed to Christie's, which was eight and a half by 11. This one has all kinds of information in it for watercolor methods. So first of all, you can learn wet on dry, wet on wet, how to paint fur, ink and wash. And you can see as I turn the pages here, and all of these pages are actually watercolor paper. The, the one that had the flower border there, you could paint something in the middle of that. On this page here on the left, it shows you, gives you an example and, and encourages you to practice doing glazes, making different levels of gradient washes. And look at all of these paint pictures that are in here. Now, the, the one thing about this book, I wish the pages tore out a little more easily. Uh, but that's okay. You can cut them out if you really wanted to. What I really also like about this book is the paper's not optic white, and that's simply my style. I just am not one to really buy a lot of optic white paper, uh, but there's nothing against it. I just It's just not what I typically use. Uh, what I really do like about this is the subject matter, and uh, Christy Rice also has a Woodlands one, I think. But this little mouse, First of all, look at the difference that you're given in the drawing. It's just the suggestion. It's the bare minimum of what's there. Now, Christie's drawings are very bold. They're graphic. These are very, uh, they're sketchy. It's a pencil sketch that's, that's been printed on there in a very light gray so that when we use watercolor on this paper and when we go over that, those lines disappear. This can truly become our own painting.
Another advantage to this book is that you can use bigger brushes and more water and not have any issues at all. I'm using a number six round for this little guy here. And you can see, I hope you can tell the difference. Let me zoom in a little bit. The way that the color and the water goes down on this mouse. Now I'm gonna get this wet here and uh, we'll do, I know my water's not clean, but that's okay. We'll drop in some, uh, some pigment on this, on this uh, wet surface. So we're gonna do some wet and wet techniques you can see how the paint disperses. It doesn't sit on top. It wants to go right down into that paper. That is a characteristic of, of watercolor paper. And uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to struggle at all. You don't have to compensate for anything. You don't have to learn any kind of a new uh, characteristic of paper. If you've worked with watercolor paper at all, this will act like watercolor paper that you've worked with. You can lift from it. All the things that you can do with regular watercolor paper, you can do. Um, the only time I ran into a little bit of a woe, I got to leave that alone, on Christie's uh, paper was on the bulb of the amaryllis. Um, I ended up getting enough water on there that it, when I would lift it some off, it started to lift the paper off as well. So you really can't do a whole lot of washes on there. But again, that's not a negative. It's just a characteristic of that paper. This particular paper, I did a lot of lifting on the bridge of the mouse's nose here, just like this I'm doing right now. And the paper underneath it never suffered at all. So this, this one is definitely going to be one that you can really practice those watercolor techniques and um, see where this medium can take you. Uh, it also is really good for blending these colors. And you can see I've just, I'm able to coax these colors around. The one thing I really like about this drawing on this uh, on this book on Dana's book is that because it's light it's not going to show through it's just like if you were to have sketched this yourself taken your kneaded eraser rolled over it and made those lines as light as possible and you can paint right over this and you just don't see the lines the end result in these I think personally looks more like a uh, an organic watercolor painting than it does um, in the other book. The, the thing with Christie's book that we need to remember, and, and it says right on the book, it is a watercoloring book. If that's the look you want, if that's something you're going for, then that's definitely the book for you. If you're looking for more instruction, more lesson format, uh, more of a way that you can kind of see your progress as you complete each lesson, because these really are little mini lessons. So for instance, what you can't see over there on the right uh, it does go through seven steps of how to emerge, how to, how to complete this painting and emerge with a mouse that looks much like the one in the example. Um, in each example, she gives you a finished painting with color. Uh, in Christie's book over here, there is no suggested color, and I think that's part of her mission. So if you're looking for color suggestions, Dana's book would be better. If you're looking for just pure freeform fun, Christie's book might be more up your alley. In these seven steps... Um, she goes over exactly what step to do when. And this isn't the only book that Dana has. She's got a jungle theme one, I think, and then there's an ocean theme. And I can't quite remember if there's another one, but she also does her own uh, paintbrushes and she's got a cotton watercolor sketchbook. So all of these things are available probably through Amazon, and I'm sure she's got a website. I will link to whatever I can in the description. I'll put affiliate links wherever I can, and I'll definitely link to both of these ladies' channels if they're still working on YouTube. I know that Christy is. I'm not entirely sure about Dana, but I do know that Dana's book, if you're looking to learn how to paint, how to, how to really know how the paint moves and performs, Dana's book's going to be the way to go. If you're looking for something to have pure fun and just relax and enjoy the time and maybe you want to do watercolor one day, maybe you want to do markers another day, maybe watercolor pencils, maybe you want to play with uh, uh, crayons, <laughs> uh, whatever you want to do, Christie's book is going to be the one. And I think that uh, together, the two of them would be an excellent gift for yourself or for anyone. Um, it's just that time of year where, as I'm filming this, it's late February, so we're kind of, we're done with winter, at least I am. <laughs> and, you know, you've got really nice days sometimes, followed by really turbulent weather. So you may have planned to go outside and work in the yard, or you may have been uh, planning on going on a hike, doing some plein air, and then the weather changes your plans for you. I mean, spring can be a really volatile time weather-wise. So if you've got something like this ready to go, 
then you don't need to pull out your regular painting supplies and stare at a blank page and wonder, oh, what am I going to paint today? I had planned on going to look at this great view by the lake and it's raining and now I don't want to do that. So what am I going to paint? And instead of being frustrated in your studio thinking, gosh, I don't know what I want to paint today, just pull out one of these books. You can either uh, fill in a coloring book or you can really learn some great techniques and get some practice in in the Watercolor With Me series by Dana Fox. So let me skip to the end of our little mousey here and I'll show you how he came out. I guess before I show you the end of the mouse, I really do want to show you uh, this section here. This is the grass section and you can see because, number one, because the pencil lines are so light, I can completely do the greenery around this mouse the way that I want to do it. I can play wet into wet. I can do different tones of green. I don't have to follow any set lines because no matter what I put down, it's going to look like it was the way I intended it to be. So that I'm really enjoying. I'm also very much enjoying how this paper is acting with the wet media. It's letting the watercolor do exactly what I expect it to do, especially with these different layers of green and I can create the shadows uh, in front of the mouse. I really appreciate that because if I were to have never encountered watercolor before and was first introduced to a paper that was not really intended for wet media and wet washes and layering, I would be frustrated. And as a teacher, I feel like this is going to be your best bet if you really want to learn what watercolor can do and really play with how the watercolor works without having to also wonder about, gosh, maybe my drawing was off, you know, things like that. If you just want to have one of those variables controlled and really just work on how watercolor acts and works, this book series by Dana Fox is going to be the way to go. So here he is all complete and I think he turned out pretty cute. So the thing that I really like about Dana's book is the paper, the light pencil lines, uh, the suggestions of which colors to use, and the definite instructions on which order to go in. The things that I like about Christie's book are the drawings, uh, the ability to put on very light washes, to go ahead and let the watercolor play a little bit with each other on the paper, and still come out with something that is really quite lovely. Both books are great for many different reasons. Maybe you'd like to try both of them. I'm not working with either Dana or Christy. This is just my opinion that I wanted to share with you in case you were curious about some watercolor workbooks. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.